hey, Bob, I need some characters for a horror movie. No problem. What do you have in mind? Mm, let's start with the family protagonist. I'll see what we have in stock. Oh, we just have a flawless yet righteous one, but does she have any personality traits? Well, no, she's just perfect. Great, what audience would not identify with her? Uh, we have a promotion. The hotter best friend comes with a hot boyfriend as a sexory. Oh, good, we can make the protagonist have a crush on him. Say, what do you have for cannon fodder? Eh? You know, the characters that are there just to be killed off. Oh, we have tons of those. Look, we have a couple no chemistry and an extra friend. You can even choose whether the boyfriend is the annoying friend or the jerk friend. What's the difference? One is a funny horn dog and the other is a jock-like archetype. Those are always beloved additions. Oh, but we need to be more inclusive. Say, if you are a gay character, you have a deal. I have a blind guy with a homophobic dad. Perfect! With this cast and the amazing plot we've got, there's no way this move won't be a success. I mean, what could go wrong? It's pretty impressive how often the old saying's presentation is everything and don't judge a book by its cover turn out to be right. Take movies, for example. Sometimes the main idea is great, but the whole thing so badly executed that it becomes pure garbage. Meanwhile, another movie can have a ridiculous premise, but it turns out to be quite good. But there are some ideas that are so pathetic, so silly, so nonsensical, that not even a miracle would make them work. Add worse writing, stereotypical characters, completely predictable plot, and you get truth or dare. The idea of turning a game into something horrifying is nothing new and can work, as long as you put actual effort into it. This? This has even less effort than actual game of Truth or Dare. Played by Monkeys. That's the short version, anyway. As for the long one, well... I'm Dr. Midnight. Let's dissect Truth or Dare. We start with a girl who is clearly already involved in the game, trying to escape the move in an attempt to save her career. Truth or Dare, Giselle? <laughs> Please, I don't want to play anymore, but... She picks there for whatever reason and has to set a woman on fire. Meh, any way to get out of this move is a good one as far as I'm concerned. With the mandatory scary opening out of the way, we cut to a lovely group of friends about to have their lives fucked. I can't. I already signed up for Habitat. I know. Yeah, I'm a trip leader. No, I know, I know. Since high school, you and I haven't spent more than a week away from each other. Olivia? Whatever happened in between you and the world, I choose you. Apparently, it became a prop for this movie. Okay. In the end, it doesn't matter what Olivia wants, because Mark already got in contact with the charity group and lied that Olivia was sick. Haha, <laughs> girl, I was just being nice when I acted like you have a choice. Now get in the car. So, a little group goes to Mexico, which means we get a happy montage with cute photos and generic, cheerful music. Frankly, I think I'll be having more from the charity program. Especially when this guy appears out of nowhere. Where's Marky? Maybe we could do like, you know, a little menage a trois. She's actually with her boyfriend. What about like menage a dos? Wow. Gaston would be telling this guy to change his game. Well, I suppose we can settle for this man, named Carter. He tells Ronnie to leave Olivia alone, which is a good thing because apparently he's just too nice to punch an idiot in the face. His terms, not mine. Feel free to tell me to piss off. Maybe I just like being nice. No, maybe the writers just forgot to give you an actual personality. But, get a load of this. He invites her and her friends to a place that turns out to be in the middle of nowhere and in a display of the level of intelligence we can inspect around here, they all accept. None of her parents ever had the don't accept candy from strangers talk to guys, right? There's nothing to be afraid of. Promise. What the hell could go wrong? Seriously, by now I would prefer if this was a torture movie and Carter's friends were waiting to attack them. But sadly, we just get the douchebag from before. I suppose the others are as happy to see him as I am considering they are immediately ready to leave. Carter insists they stay a little longer and play truth or dare. Chance to expose your friends to your secrets? Make them do things they don't want to? Oh well, when you say it like that... Ugh. Look, 
I know they are dumb young people in a horror movie, but you do have to be at the same double level of drunkenness in order to ignore how weird this guy is acting. They play the game for a while and, to give the writer some credit, it really goes the way a bunch of boring, annoying, drunk people would play. Why don't we get like a little girl on girl going? Uh, Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. That's my line. You're giving me all the scars I didn't get when I was younger. It doesn't help that the movie keeps emphasizing what a good, sweet, and angelic person Olivia is while trying to make sure we understand that she has a thing for Mark's boyfriend. No, really? Do you think? You're gonna let aliens kill her? I love you, but millions of people? Come on. Are you aware that Olivia is in love with your boyfriend? Like, clearly. Why are you always starting shit? There. I dare you to stop selling forged prescriptions to freshmen. Always with the moral high ground. Quick question. Why are we all friends again? But they finally got Carter to reveal why he took them all there. Sadly, it wasn't sell their organs on the black market. I needed to find someone with friends that I could trick into coming here. I could tell Olivia was a pushover, which made her an easy target. I'm okay with strangers dying if it means I get to live. It sounds insane, but the game is real. Once you're asked, you're in. Just, just, just follow the rules. Well, at least he was honest. And now the movie is over because everyone decided to leave the theater. Oh girl, you don't need him. Even though half of us are actually terrible people, we're here for you. Yeah, great way to end the trip, Liv. Lovely. After they get back home, Olivia finds Strutor there written on her desk and on a flyer she gets in the mail. Not that it bothers her, she has other things on her mind. Like reminding us that she and Mark are the best friends forever. No, seriously, they have a friendship bracelet and everything, guys. I'm gonna stop here. And since my dad took his life, you've been my only family. Between you and the world, I choose you. And I choose you. And maybe if we repeat this over and over, we won't ever have it to act as if we're really friends. Excuse me, can something actually happen around here? Anything, you know, remotely more interesting than watching the paint dry? Well, there's that. She goes to find Mark in the library, but something seems a bit off about the people there. Hey, and we get her first actual taste of the danger the characters are up against. If you talk, the dialogues were horrible. Sure there. <laughs> is, this, is this meant to be taken seriously? Those people don't look possessed, they look as high as a kite. What secret does your best friend make you hide? Marky's constantly cheating on Lucas! So, all it really took for her to tell on Mark was a bunch of people repeating the same thing over and over. I mean, I get this annoying, but she's not exactly under torture. Touch me again and I'll break that hand. Sisters? We then cut to Ronnie. Oh good, I miss him so much. Like I miss a broken bone. And by pook you I mean penis. I'm referring to my penis. Maybe we could have sex, you know? You know, if you want to be castrated, there are other ways of asking. He also meets with a smiley face and, of course, thinks it is all a game. I would like to remind you that those characters are supposed to be in college. How this guy made it past the first grade is anyone's guess. Get on the table and show everyone your pool cue. Oh, how dreadful! Wait, what? Yeah, what they don't show here is the bartender muttering. Again. But it turns out it's not so funny when other people make you uncomfortable, and Honey refuses to do the dare, which means he's out of the game of life. Meanwhile, Olivia tries to convince her remaining friends that there's something weird going on. It looked like a messed up Snapchat filter. You do know that by admitting your effect sucks, you're not doing yourself any favors, right? Skipping a bunch of useless yada yada that won't make you care about what's going on in this lag state, they see a video and find out that Ronnie is dead. Olivia tries to convince the others that it's the game, but for some strange reason they don't take her seriously. I can't imagine why they aren't believing you. Except, you know, this is the dumbest thing I ever heard in my entire life. And remember, I watched Countdown. I swear to you, something forced me to say that. And I need you to believe me. Kinda hard to believe someone who's been lying to you for so long. Excuse me, shouldn't say that to, you know, your shitting girlfriend? I know it can get confusing when everyone here is as deep as a puddle, but should at least remember that your girlfriend is blonde. 
Not that it matters in the end, since he leaves and it's then his turn to play. So, Olivia only got some messages and annoying mob, but this guy had his arm burned. Oh wait, I forgot, as the protagonist she has better plot armor. Silly me. I've had feelings for Olivia since we met. Sometimes I wonder what it'd be like to be with her instead of... Okay, le grand imbecile. No one said you had to tell her about it, let alone give a full confession. Can't you just call a parent and pretend to be asking for relationship advice? Tell some stranger on the street? Hey, who said you needed to tell anyone at all? At least Olivia was conveniently in the library of contrivance, you weren't just standing alone on the street. I know maybe it wouldn't work, but you could at least try something. Well, but what we're seeing is not real. Only the consequences are. I know my dad is to watch this boring feast until the end, but I have a dare for you. Shut the fuck up. What is all this? An intervention? I always thought day drinking Penelope would be first. It's the human bond that keeps me invested in this. We get a copy and paste from the previous scene of Olivia trying to explain what's going on. With the same rate of success. You can't be alone. Why not? Because in the picture your turn is next. Picture? What picture? You said it was in the same order you played in Mexico. What, you mean the photo you took there? You know, there's a nice little concept called consistency. Look it up! No time to think about it, Tog. Mark is next and she picks there. Dare you to follow through with your promise. Break Olivia's hand. Can I do it in her place? Mark refuses, but the game is nice enough to give Olivia time to convince her best to do it. Which doesn't count as cheating or interference or anything because she's the main character. I can't deal with this crazy right now. I got a med school interview tomorrow. I'm, I'm, see a doctor! I know your supposed best friend just smashed your hand with a hammer, but I have an interview tomorrow. Bye, love you! At the hospital, the game is apparently even more bored than we are and decides it's time for the next round. Oh, there's a there, making one of those damn machines work. Also, take this damn smiley face seriously. I want the truth. Just had my turn. You made me come out. To my father. You know, the only reason I take yeah. this seriously is that the yeah. movie is taking itself seriously. That being said... First, we've seen that whenever someone asks truth or dare, they are being controlled and don't remember saying anything. Second, what sort of question will just force him to tell his dad anything? It wasn't a dare after all. Even if the game tried to pull the same thing it did with Olivia, why can't Brett just walk away and give the answer to one of his friends? Why can't he just tell another secret, like how his girlfriend doesn't exist? You'd think that after learning that the game is real, they would try to use any possible loophole, right? Anyway, next on the shopping box, Tyson. Boo-hoo. So you come from a family of doctors then? Yes, ma'am. Well, they must have set a great example for you to want to take the same route. Uh... Stop selling forged prescriptions to freshmen. I make more money off upperclassmen anyway. I don't think you guys are talking about the same sort of doctors. How long have you been forging prescriptions? I don't. The game doesn't like cheaters or liars, so Tyson is out. And it's only now that those characters address the obvious point that everyone and their grandma were thinking about ever since this festival of the ambassador started. Pick truth. I mean, listen, we, we, we all should, right? You get the feeling they are mentioning this just now, not because they didn't have time to discuss what's going on, but because they didn't even consider this a possibility until this moment. They try to find Carter online with no results, so they type in truth or dare Mexico, and the internet spits out the security video of the mandatory scary opening. What connection there is between one thing and another? Hell if I know, hell if I care. This woman is wanted for murder. Do you really think she's gonna come out of hiding for we need your help? I'll wait outside your family's house until the game dares me to do the same to them. Why did this is mess it up even for a bluff, I have to say? She kinda has a point. Oh, by the way, it turns out they can't just speak truth every time. Truth. Sorry. That's not how this game works. Again, how fucking convenient. We got a mandatory argument scene, which is mercifully interrupted by Pen and her dare, which is to walk along the edge of the roof until she finishes drinking. 
Lucas goes to help her, but Paige says he can't because that would be cheating and she doesn't have a plot armor like Olivia does. Uh, not that this isn't a good idea and all, guys, but it might be more useful if you actually stayed under the girl. This looks like your basic setup for a wild coyote cartoon. Since they can't go over the sharpest fence ever, Olivia has an idea. My dear monumental moron. The fences connect to the house. I don't think you'd be doing that girl any favors by... You actually all hate each other, don't you? Damn it, Lucas, you had one freaking job! They get a message from the crazy pyromaniac girl arranging a meeting and, seeing how they know she's involved in the game and has already killed someone, they are as careful as a chicken crossing the road. While blindfolded. Which one of you is Olivia? She tells them how she and her friends went to the abandoned mission and, like all the deep and pleasant people we've seen up until now, got drunk as hell and trashed the place. They played it through there there and the game continued when they came back home. Guess they should have played strip poker or something. And as for why Penelope couldn't pick truth, just listen to the so-called justification the movie came up with. It's how we played. If two people picked truth in a row, then the next person had to do a dare. Thought it was more fun that way. First it was in which order the characters would play the game, and now this? Look, I understand those are plot points that need to be addressed, but one needs a more original solution rather than a copy-paste from Final Destination and the other got a justification that is simply forced. You got another turn? It's time to go, guys. Is this why you're telling us the truth? I, uh, I picked there. Why? I thought it was more fun that way. How did you know my name when I got here? I no! 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 They have to explain what happened to the police, but even they know saying a game is killing everyone just get them a padded room. They start researching the mission and find out that several people died there years ago. The scooby do investigation moment is interrupted by Olivia's turn and she peeks there. What did he say? He dared me to sleep with Lucas. Uh, I am sure where this fits in the Sisters Before Misters code. Also, did the game specify you had to have sex or can you just have a slumber party? But Olivia explains she has a reason for picking there. A dumb as hell reason, but a reason all the same. There's something that I can never tell Marquis and I'm really afraid the game's gonna make me do it. Amazing dog process, sweetie. The game will never think of daring you to simply tell her the secret. Look, if I open your head, will you find a brain or just jello? They go with it there, but the game decides voyeurism is not its thing, so it's now Lucas' turn. When asked about his feelings, he admits he cares for Olivia, but actually loves Marky. Don't miss the next episode of Truth or Dare, the teen drama to find out what happens next. Stupid cocky blocking game, Yoktu. Olivia and Lucas go to meet a survivor of the mission's massacre. Most awkward road trip ever. And why Mark isn't there? Well, she doesn't want to speak to me right now, so there's nothing we can do. Didn't you know? We are the bestest friends ever, except when you're not. They find a woman who was a nun, and she explains the mystery behind the killing game. Oh, that talk to be rich. The mission was a convent where young women went to find God. Then one of the girls told a secret. She knew spells, so she summoned a demon named Calix. He possessed our game. Yep. The supernatural threat behind all this is a demo. Sure, why not? You can tell they didn't go with this because they thought it would be scary, but just because they couldn't come up with anything else. Ignoring how this whole thing's already messed than the last season of Game of Thrones. What sense does that make? If you want to use a supernatural threat, great, but you could at least use something that fitted the story a little better. The idea of a demo, a creature from hell itself possessing or being bonded to a game of truth or dare? That's not scary, it's a comedy waiting to happen. I honestly thought they would at least have a better explanation for this. Like, maybe it was a ghost or a curse of someone who died during a dare. It goes to show I shouldn't hope. Ever. For anything. Any who gives a fuck way, the woman tells them the only way to stop Kellux. After saying I spell seven times, the person who released the demon must cut their own tongue off and place it inside a... A jar with Jack Skeleton's hawk star causing face on it? I don't even... What? 
They remember that the Pyro girls ate someone called Sandrash the mission, so they try to find out who he is. You get no point for guessing where this is going. Brad's turn comes next, and since Mark and Lucas pick a truth, he gets a dare. He needs to hold his dad at gunpoint and make him beg for his life. Considering he's the only cannon fodder left, well... Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. It's like the worst rigged game of Monopoly ever. This game is smart. It's too smart. We're not playing it, it's playing us. Uh, wrong, it's you guys who are too fucking stupid. A game of hungry hungry hippos is more complex than this. And now I'm thinking of all the games that could have made a better horror story than this. But whatever, it's now Olivia's turn and, once again, being a protagonist has its perks. Lucas just asked me. Okay, you have to pick truth. Dare. That's how Mark is. You fear most. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. I would prefer if this was a torture movie. Some people just need to be removed from humans' genetic pool. I was there the night your dad died. I know what happened. We had a few, and then he leaned in to kiss me, and I, I, I got free. He said that he would die if you ever found out. I, I told him that you'd be better off if you were dead. Okay, I don't deny this is pretty horrible, and I get not wanting to tell her friend about it, but this is like Olivia's attraction to Lucas. It's just there to add some forced drama. Also, because their supposed bond is as deep as a paper cut, you get the sensation that Olivia wasn't trying to protect Marcus' feelings, but was actually just trying to spare herself the trouble. While talking with the detective again, Olivia finds out that Carter is actually sane. Because who didn't see that coming? She also manages to get his address and they decide to drop by for a little visit. But not before they have to talk Mark out of following Dad's footsteps. I don't have anything. Now the game has us. We can still have a future. We can end this game. Carter, I know where he is. We just have to get him back to the mission. Okay, so don't open when we need you to cut out your own tongue. Well, you got over that pretty easily. So is a little reluctant to listen to them for some reason, but Olivia has a pretty strong argument. They return to the mission and prepare for the ritual while I prepare to finally leave this mess behind me forever. Truth and dare, Lucas. You know, Felix, Calix, whatever. You could have done something when they found San or while they were on the way. Just saying. Lucas picks there, which is to kill either Olivia or Marky. In the moment when picking truth might work to Biden sometime. He picks the third option, refusing to do the dare and getting the hell away. Yeah, yeah, very touching. Sam finishes the spell and is, well, a little surprised by the funny print saying he has to cut his talk off. Don't you want to live? I can't believe I'm about to do this. Why? It sounds reasonable compared to all the crap we've seen up until now. Calix possesses Lucas and ends up killing Sam. His game, his rules, I suppose. Left alone, the girls have no hope left. Even though Sam was already cutting his tongue, so maybe they can just put the thing in the wood jar anyway and see if it works. You know, the original jar was broken and yet that woman had another one right at home. You probably can get them at the $1 store anyway. But that would take too much work, so it's easy to just bring Calcus into the game when it's Mark's turn. Dare complete, Calix. Truth or dare. Once you're asked, you're in. Those are the rules, right? Ah, why, she only wants rules so she can break them. Because it's Calc's rules, except where they're not. And you know, while this could work, she doesn't even do it right. How do we get out of this game alive? You can't. Carter was the only one who could stop this. Even though demons are liars, the rules make no sense, and there is still ways to get around this. Olivia decides she is okay with pulling more people into this mess. You see, it's contrast. It's because she loves her friend. It's because they couldn't think of any other ending. We had no idea that we had encountered an unspeakable evil that wanted to play with us. The game is real. Truth or dare. Well, this is certainly, without a doubt, one of the dumbest endings I have ever seen. But I suppose it's fitting considering this is one of the dumbest movies I have ever seen. 
The characters range from bland to annoying, the events are predictable and feels like they are making the plot up as they go. As if that wasn't enough, the characters never try to use the possible loopholes or chances to at least get some advantage over the situation. It's like they are playing hot potato with their only available brain cell. Not even the ending makes sense. Some had to bring people to the mission, but Olivia can just make a video and that works just as well? Calux is in the game now. Couldn't they just do their best to keep playing until he had to pick there and they could dare him to stop playing? He probably doesn't really want to kill them, at least not yet. If he does, the game is over and I very much doubt the odds of another group just happening to sneak into that place. If Olivia was frightened enough to kill Mark in order to stay alive, it could have been a better ending. You could even show her morals slowly falling apart, or even have her be a bitch in ship's clothing from the start. Make her appear all nice and kind, but when people watch the movie again, they realize she's a manipulator. But hey, if the movie doesn't even care to make its so-called villain scary, why would it waste time with its protagonist? The only thing I think will happen now is that Calcus will get so confused with the order of people he has to ask truth or dare that he will end up stopping the game all by himself. As for me, I have a dare to complete as well. Finish a bottle of wine in the hopes you to make me forget about this movie. I'm Dr. Midnight and I hope to see you again in your next session.